Welcome to the session after lunch. Um, Daniel Gulch is going to talk to us or tell us some things about uh, messaging and XMPP and the exciting world around it. Um, a reminder, this is being recorded. So if you've got any problems, <laughs> uh, be advised. We are recording this. Lots of fun. Over to you, Daniel. All right, thank you. Welcome to my talk, uh, Settling the IM War. Uh, creating an open and federated instant messaging protocol. Uh, something about me, I'm Daniel Gulch. I'm primarily known right now for uh, as being the primary developer of the Android XMPP client conversations. Uh, conversations works just like a regular instant messenger, but it relies on open and federated standards. Um, but this is not going to be an advertisement talk about conversations, so I'm just going to say this once. Uh, check it out, it's an awesome client, uh, conversations.im. Um, but uh, only after my talk. Um, I'm also a little bit involved in the uh, broader XMPP community. Um, I'm in recent contact with the uh, server developers, with other client developers, and I go to regular meetings where the XMPP community are meets up and discusses the changes. Um, if you want to know more about me, uh, I have a website uh, called gulch.de. And yeah, so, but enough about me. Uh, who here uses more than one instant messaging client? Okay, so more than three? Okay, yeah, still a lot. Um, any of you using conversations already? Or, uh, Okay, so that's awesome. Um, well, there have always been a lot of competing instant messaging services. Back in the day, for example, we had ICQ, MSN, and a couple of more. However, in recent years, something changed. Uh, first of all, instant messaging became more and more important. Instead of turning on our computers once a day and quickly check our emails or see who is online on ICQ, um, we now are online 24-7. And, and instant messaging just became a very convenient form of communication. Uh, it's less obtrusive than a telephone call, for example, but it still allows for a fairly natural way of communication. Um, so the second thing that changed was that the number of available instant messengers exploded. We are now at a point where even trying to name all of them is a sheer impossible task. Um, well, that's not a problem, you might think, as long as everybody uses WhatsApp. Um, but in fact, not everybody does. Um, first of all, the, the, uh, everybody uses WhatsApp uh, views a sort of European view on it. Um, if you look at uh, other parts of the world, uh, the market share of WhatsApp is not as significant. And the significance of uh, WhatsApp further diminishes if you start looking at what kind of instant messaging solutions you are using at work. Um, at work, tools like Slack, HipChat, or even Skype become uh, more important. Um, however, at the end of the day, all those tools do pretty much the same thing. Um, that's why there's huge uh, demand for uh, the so-called multi-protocol clients like Pigeon, for example, or Trillion, which is popular on Windows, or the latest one called France, which, which incorporates all those um, web clients in one UI. So this leaves us with a question on why isn't there a standard protocol for instant messaging that would make all those services interoperable? Well, actually there is. Um, um, such a standard actually exists, uh, and it has been for more than a decade. Um, it's called XMPP, which is short for Extensible Message and Present Protocol, and I'm not going to go into too many technical details. Um, the key thing to remember is that it's extensible. So 
at a very low level, you are just able to exchange messages between two devices. And at a higher level, you can build almost everything on top of it. Uh, the basic protocol is an IETF standard, and the extensions are formalized as so-called XEPs by the XMPP Standards Foundation. Uh, because of so those extensions, XMPP can keep up with the changing requirements that naturally occur over time. Um, I've already talked a lot about the specific extensions you need to build a full-fledged instant messaging solutions. Um, for example, at my uh, last year's talk at FrostCon, uh, called XMPP 2015, Challenges of Modern Instant Messaging. Or uh, um, I more recently wrote an essay um, called The State of Mobile XMPP in 2016. So if you um, want to know more about the technical details, go check those out. Uh, these are linked from my website. Uh, who has read my essay or have been to last year's talk? Okay, it's a lot of people, yeah. The rest of you should definitely check this out if you are interested in the technical details and not like an end user. If you're an end user, you probably shouldn't care about all this. Um, so so um, I ended my last year's talk um, with a statement that with XMPP, you are now able to send an encrypted messages, which can also be an image, to someone who uses multiple devices, and some of those devices can also be offline. So this might not sound too revolutionary, but for example, the Facebook Messenger, which recently introduced end-to-end -end encryption, uh, still fails to do this. When you turn on end-to-end -end encryption in the Facebook Messenger, you have to select one specific device. Um, to get to that point, uh, we had to introduce two new extensions. Um, uh, one was called HTTP Upload, which shifted from the traditional uh, method of file transfer used in XMPP, which was peer-to-peer -peer based, where you can only exchange messages from one specific device to another device, to uh, another method where you basically upload a file, an image, for example, to the server, and then just distribute the link to the other uh, devices of the contact. And the other extension we introduced uh, capable of encrypting to multiple devices is called Omimo. Last August, at the time of my talk, the only client capable of Omimo was Conversations. Um, and during the past year, um, the other extension we introduced, HTTP Upload, um, has seen a pretty huge adoption rate. Several clients and servers have now native support for this. However, Omimo is in a slightly more complicated situation. The good news first, uh, last December, we, re we released a very basic plugin for the desktop client Gadrim, at which point the multiple uh, device aspect of Omimo actually started to make sense. Um, unfortunately, Omimo suffers from one big problem. Due to its very nature of involving encryption and multiple devices and fingerprints and stuff like this, um, implementing can take up several days, if not weeks. And in a world where development is mostly done by volunteers, it makes a huge difference if something can be implemented in the afternoon or if it's a week-long commitment. Um, this is why something like HTTP Upload, which can easily be implemented in the afternoon, gets adopted pretty quickly, especially because you immediately see results. Um, with Omimo, on the other hand, you would simply just spend days just preparing stuff and setting up the infrastructure before you are able to uh, send a simple hello world, for example. Um, and I'm fairly certain that the Mimo plugin for Gajim only happened because we did, we did the initial work ourselves and I didn't mind putting in our, the work because I have a commercial interest 
in it, and I don't care if it's frustrating for a couple of days. And after that, actually, someone else took over because um, when you have the basis, then it's easier you just have incremental steps and fixing bug or bugs or doing UI improvements and so on. And the only other MIMO implementation on the horizon now is the one in Chat Secure, which is also not being developed by volunteers, but by uh, paid developers, thanks to uh, funding from the US government. Um, and if you look at the progress conversations has made in the two years of existence, it becomes clear that there aren't any unsolvable technical problems. And you can either build up on extension, up, up on ex existing extensions, or if that's not possible, uh, introduce your own. So it's, it's not really about missing features. So um, what, el what, what other problems might there be? Um, oops. So some say um, it's, it's a fragmentation. With an open standard, you always have um, clients only implementing just a minor subset. Um, Second. <laughs> well, I mean, it was an open standard. Um, there's no, nothing stopping you from um, creating a very basic client that is barely capable of sending messages and call yourself an XMPP client. Such clients will always exist, and if they gain some popularity, um, they will, or they have a chance to put XMPP into a bad light. Um, however, for the developers who are actually interested in creating a good state-of-the-art client, there are compliance suites that help a newcomer navigate the jungle of various extensions. Those meta extensions, like the XMPP compliance suite 2016, points the developer to only a handful of extensions and basically say implement those and you're fine. So when we, this is the client side, when we uh, start talking about fragmentation on the server side, um, we have to make a distinction between the server implementations and the actual installations. The three major uh, server implementations aren't actually that fragmented. Um, they all share more or less the same feature set. But if you look at the actual ins installations that are out there, we get a different picture. Um, we often see this problem uh, with users stepping by our support channel and um, asking the question, why doesn't feature X work from me, and for a long time, the answer to that has always been, um, it's just your server that doesn't support us. Conversations is perfectly fine of handling this. This is just the fault of your server. But this is still a major issue because the end user really doesn't want to care um, if it's a server or the client. They just want it to work. Um, so why, why doesn't those installations are, don't offer those features? Um, most servers are run by volunteers and it's safe to assume that they are not willingly holding back those features. Most of the uh, extensions don't put any more, more load or pressure on the server and it's usually just a matter of enabling those extensions or simply not using the extremely outdated version from the Debian repository, for example. Um, so, how do, we, how do we fix this problem? Um, 
Well, we first have to make the problem visible. So a couple of months ago, I wrote a small tool that connects to your XMPP server and simply checks for the features. Originally, it was meant like some kind of self-assessment tool that you can run on your own server and checks if your own server, the server you operate, supports those extensions. But you can also uh, gather more information from more servers and collect those informa this information in some kind of list. Um, so this is what I did. I, I created accounts on various servers and um, just did this overview of um, what extension is uh, enabled on what server. So, and when you do this, you get a lot of missing features, which are marked in red on, on this uh, diagram, uh, on a lot of servers. So, what do you do now? How do you fix this? How, how do you convince a server operator to enable those features? Well, what I did was try asking them. So, I, I spent an afternoon to, to look up the contact information of a couple of bigger servers and just sent them an email and said, hey, um, XMPP evolved a lot in the past and we now have those extensions that need to be enabled on the server and your server actually supports this, you just have to enable it. And if you want to uh, add a more convincing argument to them or to give the server operator some incentive, to actually uh, enable this, uh, try gamification. If you, um, if you order this graph um, by, by uh, supported features and not, by, uh, not alphabetically, then you get a, a nice little high score system and every server operator wants to be on top of some list, right? Um, so, and this is something where every one of you can actually help. You don't need to have any programming skills. Just uh, go to this list, pick a server from like very down there that doesn't support any of the extensions, and then send an email or mention them on Twitter or something and just ask them to uh, enable those extensions. So, what other problems are there? Um, well, another argument um, that is usually made against XMPP in particular or more general uh, to other standards or open protocols is that it slows down your development process. Um, but this is actually not true. Um, it's very you, you don't have to wait for um, something to be a standard to implement it. You can implement something first and then try to standardize it afterwards. I mean, every halfway decent programmer uh, should write down what they're trying to uh, do anyway and document it in, in some way. And if you modify that existing documentation, you're already halfway to, to an official ex extension. Um, I mean, chances are that um, during the process of standardization, um, the protocol will evolve a little bit and be adopted so other people uh, get their needs covered with this as well. But usually they don't change in a way that, it makes, uh, that makes it impossible to um, adopt your implementation. Um, Um, well, and 
And even if it's a little bit of extra trouble um, to, to standardize those extensions, it's still far better than implementing your, an entire uh, IAM protocol. Um, and a lot of extensions actually um, came to be like this. Um, Google, for example, uh, originally introduced uh, Jingle, the uh, session initialization you need uh, to do VoIP call, voice over IP calls or uh, video calls. Um, and this later evolved into the official standard, into the official Jingle extension. And the um, original Google Talk client also had an extension called Google Q, which um, limited the battery consumption. Um, uh, the client uh, generates when in background. And this extension with a few modifications on the syntax uh, later became client state indication. Um, unfortunately, this process become, can become annoying if you're waiting for someone else to publish an extension. Um, the primary example for this is the mixed story. Um, XMPP always had an extension for group chat called MOOC, multi-user chat. Uh, and MOOC looks a bit like ISC and has a very extensive permission model with, um, with moderators, participants, visitors, and so on. And for some time now, the broader XMPP community um, agrees on the fact that MOOC isn't really suited for those private group chats in the style of WhatsApp or Hangouts and should be replaced with something else. In fact, last year during the uh, question section of my talk, uh, I was asked about um, Omimo encrypted group chat and my response was that we have to wait for Mix. Um, and Mix at that time was in very early planning stages and without going into into technical details, a year, a, year, a, year, a year later, we still don't have a proper implementation. Well, there are a number of reasons for this. And the number one reason is that Mix is just a very vast extension. It's set out to cover the use cases for the next decade and a lot of people are, are trying to get their use cases covered. Um, but the more frustrating reason to some people was that Mix was primarily written down by one or two people from the same company. Um, while the requirements and the features that Mix, Mix should have um, were discussed publicly and everyone could get their uh, wishes in, basically, um, the actual... Um, the actual writing happened behind closed doors and 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 any offer to help out or to speed up the process was rejected. Um, so this left a lot of people who desperately needed a replacement for MOOC uncertain about if and when it was going to happen. Um, as a result, we, we saw two different proposals uh, for other group chat extensions that were basically variants of MOOC. However, it is rather unlikely that those extensions will ever become a standard because everyone else is still waiting for MIX. Um, so, and so what I did, I was also waiting for MIX, so what I did is I actually reread the MOOC standard again and came up with a solution to get my own Omimo group chat uh, covered with the existing MOOC I, by, um, by, yeah, let's say using MOOC in a way that no one else has before and stretching some of the definitions uh, in the standard. And, but, but it got to a point where it was actually usable uh, with some limitations. For example, the, the, primarily, uh, the primary uh, limitation is that um, 
to, to engage in a group chat, you have to have everyone um, in your roster, in your, in your personal contact list. And, but, but, but this still works fine. Um, I mean, especially for those small group chats, you are usually ju just ch chatting with your friends and you have those individual contacts in your contact list anyway. Um, so I'm now at a point where um, I can more patiently wait for uh, mix to happen because I, I'm, I, don't, I no longer have the pressure or, of actually needing a solution because I already have a workaround. And, and, and yes, of course, uh, using mix will make a lot of things more easier and uh, definitely more bulletproof, but it's, yeah, it's fine for now. Um, and so just last week, uh, the people who wrote Mix actually published a huge progress update to the standard. And we might actually now see first implementations of Mix pretty soon. Um, so, if XMPP is such a fine protocol, um, why doesn't it get used more often? Um, well, I, I, I'm not um, the one who makes the decisions at Google or Facebook or WhatsApp, so I can uh, merely speculate on the reasons. Um, but, um, some companies, for example, Google or Open Whisper Systems, at some point actually issued statements uh, on why they are not using XMPP. However, those statements, as every statement made by a marketing department, of course, should be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, for example, the our arguments from Open Whisper Systems for not using XMPP are factually just incorrect. Um, so what other reasons are there for a company not to use XMPP? Um, but to answer that, uh, let's take a step back first and look at the companies who actually do use XMPP. Um, while they might not actively advertise this, WhatsApp actually does use XMPP. Um, of course, over time, they introduced a couple of extensions and um, the most prominent extension of this being uh, the uh, compression layer that optimizes uh, XMPP for the use on mobile devices, which, which, which WhatsApp primarily tries to do. Um, but they decided not to pub publish and standardize the extensions. And before we going to speculate on the reasons on why WhatsApp doesn't do this. Um, let's look at some other companies or organizations that actually do use XMPP. Um, for example, NATO. NATO uses a lot of XMPP. And, and as one can imagine, our government organizations and the army uh, in general have some special requirements uh, that are not already covered by existing extensions. So what did they do? Did they, did they think, oh, XMPP doesn't solve our problem, let's invent something else? No, of course they didn't. They, they just came up with an extension. Um, and this is why there's now an extension that labels individual messages with security clearances and stuff like this, because you do need this in, in a military environment. Um, but this opens up the question on what's the difference between NATO and WhatsApp? Well, it's easy, it's, it's a revenue model. NATO basically pays a company um, to develop an instant messaging solutions for them, and having the protocol standardized can only be beneficial to them. Because in theory, after the contract ex expires, they can hire someone else to keep on developing 
the instant messaging solution. Um, so NATO, as a user, pays someone uh, to develop something. In case of WhatsApp, the revenue model um, looks entirely different. Um, the user doesn't pay for anything. Um, WhatsApp instead relies on, I guess, inflating the investment bubble and uh, with, with the vague argument that at some point when we gather enough uh, metadata, we can sell very, very targeted advertisement. Um, but doing this, um, inflating the business bubble, relies on growth, uh, on generating more users every day. And in a federated world where clients and servers are interchangeable, that's not possible. I, for example, I, I have no idea how many people are using conversations. Because, of course, I do, do have uh, the download numbers from, um, from the Google Play Store, but I don't have any download numbers from Fdroid, for example, um, or from the admittedly few people who built it themselves. Or I also don't account for, um, for all the forks of conversations that are out there. So, and by the way, if you ever wondered why um, Open Whisper Systems is so reluctant to have the Signal app on Fdroid, well, there's one reason. Because uh, when everybody uses um, Google Play, they have a better over overview of how many users they do have. Um, so if you wanted to change all that, um, we would have to start paying for the services or uh, software directly. Well, remember when I said implementing Omimo is, um, is boring and unmotivating work? And two of the implementations that are out there or that are being developed are actually being worked on by our paid developers. Um, what if we stopped relying on volunteers to develop our software for us and instead uh, paid someone to do it like we pay everyone else in our society. And you don't even need to have a large user base to make this work. Let's take conversations, for example, which admittedly is a rather small open source product compared to others. If everyone who uses conversations would have bought it on the Play Store for about two bucks, uh, I would actually be able to make a decent living off of this. Or in other terms, even a fairly small user base, like the one from Conversations, would be able to pay for a full-time developer. And, well, I guess if you're fine with a few large companies uh, controlling our most important form of communication, we don't have to do anything. So we'll continue to act in the interest of the investors and the current mess of incompatible instant messaging solutions will continue as they are a consequence of the business model. However, if you are unsatisfied with the current situation, you should stop relying on the work of a few volunteers and actually start paying for the software and services we use on a daily basis. Well, thank you. Okay, there's now uh, one more thing actually. Um, I announced this on Twitter a couple of days ago. And well, it's been a very interesting year uh, since we introduced Omimo last August. Um, we saw the Gajim Omimo plugin came to life in December, which was an important step because it actually allowed us to enjoy the multi-end aspect of uh, Omimo. And I released Omimo encrypted group chats on top of MOOC um, that proved that MOOC is capable of handling end-to-end -end encrypted group chats in March. And we also sorted out some licensing issues uh, that stopped the uh, chat secure developers from implementing Omimo for chat secure on iOS. And they are actually working on that now. And while I don't have an official ETA for our uh, Omimo and iOS, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that, that it will happen this year. I mean, 
after all, Chat Secure on iOS has already made a huge progress this year and implemented push notifications, which finally allowed us to uh, reliably receive messages on, on iOS, which was unfortunately impossible before. Um, however, one important thing for Omimo is missing, and that's our, our independent security audit. Well, it was missing until now. And I'm very happy to announce that um, I can finally make this uh, audit public. I've, I've been sitting on this uh, audit for a couple of months now, actually, and we had some um, things to sort out with the company who actually paid for this. Um, and if you ever read a pen test or an audit before, this is actually one of the better audits. It's actually pretty nice to read, and it's made by very competent people at a security company called um, Radically Open Security, and, uh, which are based in uh, the Netherlands. And it was paid for by a very nice uh, company called the Pacific Research Alliance. And it covers both the protocol itself as well as the implementation in, uh, in conversations. And well, to quickly reiter reiterate on my earlier point, this audit only came to happen because someone had a commercial interest in conversations and needed this. This wasn't paid for by, uh, by donations or certainly wasn't done by someone who volunteered to do it. So, yeah, that's about it. Questions? We have a microphone, I guess. You said there were main, two main developers of Mix, and that there were some uh, uh, some people. There were some people who, um, instead of of waiting for Mix, or instead of trying to get their own um, their, their own ideas in, uh, instead de developed uh, other protocols based on the on the current uh, Mux solution. Mm -hmm. And do you is there anything in the current uh, Mix? Uh, Instruct in the in the current mix um, protocol uh, that you think is may, may, might be a problem, which might be because it's only uh, produced by two developers uh, from one company who might have a vested interest in um, only doing only implementing no, some like I, of the ideas. Yeah. No, like I said, um, mix is the actual XAP itself, like like the entire text it covers is. Um, written down by two people and it was and it happened behind closed doors so you didn't have an ETA for this but um, the features in Mix were actually uh, discussed um, on, on a public in a public place with, with a lot of different XMPP, XMPP users from various companies so for example uh, there are so-called XMPP summits, summits twice a year where uh, the larger XMPP community gathers and Parts of a conference, and we actually discussed mix for like an entire day or something like this. So, okay, so the, you don't think there are like any maybe bigger problems uh, in mix, which or I, cool ideas which could have been included, which weren't included because uh, the, uh, it's uh, the the company of the two develop which pays the two developers um, might not want that to be included. So you think it's a good and open process, and that the Mix protocol itself is uh, pre, uh, it's, it's actually uh, very good, uh, good, good. Mm, and, uh, no, I, I don't think so. No. Okay. So. Um, and I mean, in any case, once it's, it's public, you could, in theory, of course, get your own changes in if it were necessary. Yeah. So. Of course, you couldn't always fork if you want. <laughs> no, you <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily have to fork it. You just have to convince the rest of the XMPP standards uh, foundation to accept your change. So. Thanks. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, then thank you. If you want, I do have stickers with me if anyone wants some. And just meet me up here. Okay, thank you. Thank you.